Marx, Ritter, and Nietzsche were all funded and under the instruction of the Rothschilds. The idea was that those who direct the overall conspiracy could use the differences in those two so-called ideologies to enable them to divide larger and larger factions of the human race into opposing camps so that they could be armed and then brainwashed into fighting and destroying each other, and particularly to destroy all political and religious institutions, the same plan put forward by Weishaupt in 1776. Eva Hanoi, Amschel Mel Rothschild's wife, dies. In 1849, Guttel Schnapper, Mayor Amschel Rothschild's wife, dies. Before her death, she would nonchantly state, If my sons did not want wars, there would be none. In 1850, construction begins this decade on the manor houses of Mintmore in England and Ferreres in France. More Rothschild's manors will follow throughout the world, all of them filled with works of art. Jacob James Rothschild in France is said to be worth 600 million francs, which at the time was 150 million francs, more than all the other bankers in France put together. In 1852, N.M. Rothschild and Sons begins refining gold and silver for the Royal Mint and the Bank of England and other international customers. In 1853, Nathaniel D. Rothschild, the son-in-law of Jacob James Mayer Rothschild, purchases Chateaubriand Mouton, the Bordeaux vineyard of Mouton, and renames it Chateau Mouton Rothschild. In 1854, Caroline Stern, Solomon Mayer Rothschild's wife, dies. In 1855, Amschel Mayer Rothschild dies. Solomon Mayer Rothschild dies. Kalman Carl Mayer Rothschild dies. In 1858, Lionel D. Rothschild finally takes his seat in Parliament when the requirement to take an oath in the true faith of a Christian is broadened to include other oaths. He becomes the first Jewish member of the British Parliament. In 1861, President Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States from 1960 till his assassination in 1865, approaches the big banks in New York to try to obtain money to lo loans to support the ongoing American Civil War. As these large banks were heavily under the influence of the Rothschilds, they offer him a deal they know he cannot accept, 24% to 36% interest on all monies loaned. Lincoln is very angry about this high level of interest, and so he prints his own debt-free money and informs the public that this is now legal tender for both public and private debts. In 1862, by April, 449,338,902 dollars worth of Lincoln's debt-free money has been printed and distributed. He states of this, We gave the people of this republic the greatest blessing they ever had, their own paper money to pay their own debts. That same year, the Times of London publishes a story containing the following statement, If that mischievous financial policy which had its origin in the North American Republic should become indurated down to a fixture, then that government will furnish its own money without cost. It will pay off debts and be without a debt. It will have all the money necessary to carry on its commerce. It will become prosperous beyond precedence in the history of civilized governments of the world. The brains and wealth of all countries will go to North America. That government must be destroyed, or it will destroy every monarchy on the globe. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln discovers that the Tsar of Russia, Alexander II, from 1855 to 1881, was having problems with the Rothschilds as well, as he was refusing their continual attempts to set up a central bank in Russia. The Tsar then gives President Lincoln some unexpected help. 
The Tsar issued orders that if either England or France actively intervene in the American Civil War and help the South, Russia would consider such action a declaration of war and take the side of President Lincoln. To show that he wasn't messing around, he sent part of his Pacific fleet to port in San Francisco and another port to New York. The Rothschild Banking House in Naples, Italy, C.M. de Rothschild F. Fagilli, closes following the unification of Italy. The Rothschilds used one of their own in America, John D. Rockefeller, to form an oil business called Standard Oil, which eventually takes over all of its com competition. In 1864, Rothschild's August Belmont, who by now is the Democratic Party's national chairman, supports General McClellan as a Democratic nominee to run against President Abraham Lincoln in this year's election. Much to the anger of Belmont, President Lincoln wins the election. In 1865, in a statement to Congress, President Abraham Lincoln states, I have two great enemies, the Southern Army in front of me and the financial institutions in the rear. Of the two, the one in my rear is my greatest foe. Later that year, on April 14th, President Lincoln is assassinated, less than two months before the end of the American Civil War. Following a brief training period in the Rothschild's London Bank, Jacob Schiff, a Rothschild born in their house in Frankfurt, arrives in America at the age of 18 with instructions and the finance necessary to buy into a banking house there. The purpose of this was to carry out the following tasks. 1. To gain control of America's money system through the establishment of a central bank. 2. To find desirable men who, for a price, would be willing to serve as stooges for the Illuminati and promote them into high places in the federal government, the Congress, Supreme Court, and all the federal agencies. 3. To create minority group strife through the nations particularly targeting the whites and blacks. And four, to create a movement to destroy religion in the United States with Christianity as the main target. Nathaniel de Rothschild becomes member of parliament for Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire. In 1868, Jacob James Meadow Rothschild dies shortly after purchasing Chateau Lafay, one of the four great premier Grand Cru estates of France. He is the last of Mayor Amschel Rothschild's sons to die. In 1870, Nathaniel D. Rothschild dies. Let's all take out our napkins. In 1871, an American general named Albert Pike who had been enticed into the Illuminati by Gu Giuseppe Mazzini, completes his military blueprint for three world wars and various revolutions throughout the world, culminating into moving this great conspiracy into its final stage. He writes that the First World War is to be fought for the purpose of destroying the Tsar in Russia, as promised by Nathaniel Mayor Rothschild in 1815. The Tsar is to be replaced with communism, which is to be used to attack religions, predominantly Christianity. The differences between the British and the German empires are to be used to foment this war. He goes on to say that the Second World War is to be used to foment the controversy between fascism and political Zionism, with the slaughter of Jews in Germany a linchpin in bringing hatred against the German people. This is designed to destroy fascism with the Roth which the Rothschilds created and increase the power of political Zionism. This war is also designed to increase the power of communism to the level that it equaled that of united Christendom. The Third World War is to be played out by stirring up hatred of the Muslim world for the purposes of playing the Islamic world and the political Zionists off against one another. While this is going on, then the remaining nations would be forced to fight themselves 
into a state of mental, physical, spiritual, and economic exhaustion.